Something that we talk about often on this channel is running tracks in Ableton Live, and specifically running tracks in Ableton Live's range of view. I've walked through tutorials showing you how to format songs using my template for live performance, um, and then take those formatted songs to uh, build sets in Ableton Live and show you how to use tracks in a way that um, is efficient, stable, and flexible. But often I'll get questions comments on the video saying, hey, this is great, but uh, why don't you show people how to run tracks in session view? I'll even hear comments or statements from people that will say things like, it takes too long to run tracks in arrangement view, so I run tracks in session view, and, and I need to repeat and have flexibility, so I use session view. And what I thought I would do in this video is kind of take you through my personal history of how I have run tracks in Ableton Live um, and show you how I started to where I am now and hopefully answer and explain the question why I think you should run tracks in arrangement view. Now, starting this video, I should let you know both arrangement view and session view are awesome. They both have really great places, but uh, in live performance, but generally speaking, when I'm running tracks on stage, which is a linear process uh, where I start a song and then I end the song and I follow a kind of linear progression, even if I repeat within there, 99.9% um, .9 of the time I use arrangement view because arrangement view is linear. If I'm doing a live looping performance, something to where I step on stage and I trigger a section. I don't know how long I'm going to be in that section. And then I trigger the next one. That's when I typically will use session view. It's worth noting. You could get both views to do similar things. Um, uh, some, uh, each view is better at some things than others, right? Again, for a just live looping thing where you continue on a section until you're ready to move on session view is great for that for arrangement view, creating transitions. Uh, it's better for that. But the final thing I want to say is both views can almost be hacked to do similar things. So what it comes down to is, uh, what, uh, view, which way of running tracks takes me the least amount of time, gives me the most freedom, flexibility, and is stable. So let me take you on my journey. So I started, uh, using Ableton live for tracks, probably in about 2004 when I went to college and we we're running tracks in Ableton Live and this is typically what my set looked like. Now obviously this is Live 11.1. Uh, I did not have Live 11.1 back then but this is what my set would look like. I would load a song into Session View here. Each one of my scenes would be a different song and so I would essentially have a, um, a set list of all my different songs loaded together which was great. So I could go and launch a scene uh, that would start playing it would play all my stems, all my multi-tracks uh, at the same time. And, and that was super great. And if I had a different song uh, and I added another song to this, I would just go to my next scene and uh, I would add that song in there. Now, this worked out really well for me, but then I left the context that I was primarily using tracks in. I went to a new context. I was working with a worship leader at the time that he would often, you know, we would start a song, I would trigger it, and then he would turn around and do this. And that meant repeat. And I went, um, I can't repeat because if you look at this, where's the verse? Where's the chorus? Now, if, if I'm in this view, I see the full song, but I, I have no real like sense of where the verse or chorus is, right? And so I found out I needed to find a better way to to run tracks. Uh, and so being able to live certified trainer, being the expert that I am, uh, I thought about it. I did some research and I landed on this where I would take my song and essentially chop it up into song sections. So I could go and I could trigger my intro. And then when I was ready to go to my verse, I could trigger my verse. When I'm ready to go to my next section, I could trigger this and trigger that. And that was great. And that worked really well um, for me at the time. If I wanted to repeat something, I would just click it again. If I wanted to move on to the next one, I would just trigger the next section. But I was playing guitar at the same time. I was running tracks and playing guitar, and I couldn't just constantly be triggering the, neat, the each song section. That was requiring way too much interaction for me, particularly when I was switching from acoustic guitar to electric guitar, starting a song, trying to repeat things. It was, it was just far too much for me to try to do at the same time, right? So what I figured out I could do is I could use follow actions in Ableton Live. First, follow actions on clips. Uh, I found some plugins that would let me kind of try to speed up this process. And then now, like in a, a Live 11 and 11.1, .1, you can do follow actions on scenes, which is a little easier, to where you essentially say, at, at, after um, I get to the end of this clip, after playing... Um, uh, two measures in this case, I want you to go to the next scene. So like this first scene here is set to play for two measures. This one here is set to play for three measures. After three measures, go to the next scene. So I could use follow actions to basically kind of progress through my song. And if I wanted to repeat a section, I would just re-trigger that section. So that worked well for me. 
Um, and it, it was um, uh, going quite okay. Now, next thing for me is I then progressed to building a master set in Ableton Live. So I would basically take every single one of my songs, I would chop it up, uh, and I would build a master set of all my content and my songs. What I realized, though, is I started spending a whole heck of a lot of time uh, chopping my songs up to, to get the freedom and flexibility to jump around. And then I would spend a lot of time and have to figure out math, which I'm not great at math, but go, okay, let's see. Let's look at this. How many measures? This is one. Okay, two measures. And then I got to go over here and type in two uh, in order to get this song to play linearly. Okay. And so this was kind of my, my big epiphany, if you will, is I went, I'm doing all this work to take session view, this thing that is nonlinear, this thing that's that's great at uh, live looping to loop and loop and loop. I'm doing tons of work to get this nonlinear thing to become linear. And uh, I had an epiphany. I was at, uh, teaching a class with uh, a buddy of mine, Philip Edwards, who started multitracks.com. And uh, I was showing my setup, which was super advanced and super, super cool. And Philip showed his setup over an arrangement view. And I started looking at it and I went, huh. I think there may be something here because I'm doing all this work to get session view to do this automatically. Like I've got to chop up my song, then I've got to do the math to figure it out and hope and pray that I get it right. And then if I run into a tempo change, oh gosh, this is not possible. Uh, if I run into a time signature change, oh, this is going to be a disaster. There's so much work. Whereas in arrangement view, I get this automatically, right? And then the beauty of this in arrangement view is while I get this automatically, if I want to loop an intro, I just click an intro again and it's going to loop again, which is great. And so I started looking in arrangement view and went, okay, uh, I think there's something here. Um, I can take what I before was spending a, a lot of time on to format songs. Uh, I was spending uh, a lot of time to chop up songs and I could run and uh, I could use uh, arrangement view to do this. And if I'm using arrangement view to do this, uh, then I'm going to save uh, tons and tons of time because I'm no longer going to be chopping up songs. But then I discovered that uh, what I actually ended up doing was uh, I would spend a decent amount of time in a range of view really doing two things. Um, re-adding my tempo. So I would go to build a set from session view. Or I would go to build a set from a song that uh, I downloaded. I, I would build it and I'd have to transfer my tempo again. I would also have to go in and re-add my song sections because my locators wouldn't come with it in arrangement view. So then I landed on what I call the three-part framework for using tracks, which basically meant I would start to format my songs using a tempo track and using a markers track, which would save my song sections in arrangement view. And then from there, I could really quickly like build a set uh, full of, uh, multiple songs. Right. And when I build my set full of multiple songs, it, it typically would look something like this. So this is an example set where everything's formatted exactly the same way. It's super neat and clean and easy to follow. And I have the freedom and flexibility to jump around in my song sections and I have the freedom and flexibility to, um, uh, again, not have to, uh, or I have the efficiency rather of not having to re-add my tempo, but the freedom and flexibility of being able to jump around with those locators. So what I discovered is, I was doing all this work to try to get session view to do this, right? Whereas arrangement view automatically did this. And if all I did was add locators into arrangement view, then I got what I was taking all this work to do in session view. But then again, I had that epiphany of going, okay, the three-part framework, um, this is the thing that really unlocks this because I can take my songs in arrangement view, start with my template that I've created for live performance, format all my songs exactly the same way using this template, and then take those formatted songs uh, and build a set using that same template. And I was able to apply the three-part framework for using tracks. So here's where I've landed, and this is where I am today. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning, for 99.9% .9 of the time, if you're running tracks in Ableton Live, if you're on stage, you're in a linear environment. Even if you're repeating, you're in a linear environment. You start and you play till the end of the song. Um, you could still repeat. You could still jump around in sections. But because of that, arrangement view is the best view to run tracks in. Now... Uh, there's some inherent flaws to, to arrangement view. Uh, your tempo doesn't come over when you transfer between sets and your locators don't come over when you transfer between sets. But that's where the three-part framework for using tracks comes in. And again, I've talked about this many times before on this channel, creating a tempo for live performance, formatting your songs with that template and doing the work once doing the work once to format your song and then building your set of those formatted songs. No matter how many songs you have in your set, 
it takes you five to 10 minutes to make that happen. Uh, that really unlocked and changed a lot of things for me. And the great thing is it's unlocked and changed a lot of things for uh, really thousands of people worldwide that have applied these principles that I teach at From Studio to Stage. And again, it's the principle of the three-part framework for using track as well as a couple other frameworks that teach you to have freedom and flexibility, uh, to have a set and a computer setup and a gear setup that's stable, but do it all in a way that's efficient, where you don't have to take hours to make that happen. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, if that's something that you want to learn, if you want to transition from session view to arrangement view, if you want to use tracks in a way that gives you freedom and flexibility, that's stable, but most important of all is efficient and doesn't take you hours, then I want to encourage you to click the link in the description of this video and check out From Studio to Stage, uh, which is my uh, website, which is an Ableton Live certified training center that provides you with 24-7 on-demand on access to over 50 courses that will teach you step-by-step. -step. They're available whenever you're ready and whenever you're willing and want to watch the content that will walk you through um, from zero to completion, how to format songs, how to build sets in Ableton Live, how to integrate with all of your gear. All of that's available um, at From Studio to Stage. And it's the Ableton Live Certified Training Center. So you know the content you're getting um, is appropriate. You know the content that you're getting is gonna work with your context. And it's created by someone who knows what they're doing. You don't have to kind of play YouTube roulette and hope what you find is good. So if this content on this channel has been helpful to you, uh, if you're watching this and go, yeah, I think I could get into this. I, I think I could see uh, the light at the end of the tunnel um, uh, using tracks in this way, uh, then I would encourage you to head to the From Studio to stage site. Again, I've got a link in the description in this video uh, where you can find how to get there and how to become a from studio to stage student. And if you're not ready for that, here's the next thing I would encourage you to do. Um, click the link in the description as well too, to head to from studio to stage.com slash free download all the free resources I have available there, including my free tracks template that you can use, watch some content, uh, some tutorials on the uh, on the channel here uh, and download those for free uh, and apply the three part framework for using tracks to your content. Now you're gonna have to kind of do that on your own without support and without the full courses, but it's a great way to get started and kind of introduce you to the ecosystem. And then finally, again, if you're not willing to subscribe, if you're not ready to download the free content yet, then just hit subscribe to this YouTube channel. I post new content every Every single day 10 a.m central um, and hit the bell icon so you're notified when the content goes live and here's what i tell people you'll get a notification on your phone if you're using the youtube app and look at the title and if it seems interesting to you then click through and watch it and if not ignore it and check out the next one because tomorrow 10 a.m central will be another tutorial thanks so much for watching this content thanks for all your support uh thanks for following this channel subscribing to the channel uh, and for those of you that are part of the community i'll see you over on the site and thanks for your support as well too it allows me to release this free content every single day so thanks for watching we'll see you over from studio to stage check the link in the description take care everybody bye